Okay, I'm back. So I, I mapped out the, the six string functions. And if we're going to talk about where these functions are continuous versus discontinuous, we should probably just talk about domain first. Because domain and continuity are inextricably tied to one another. If, if a function does not exist somewhere, then that means it can't be continuous at that spot. So when we think about this, what are the domains? So I'll do this. Here's the domain column. Cosine exists everywhere. So what do you think that does for its uh, continuity? Yes, you guessed it. It's continuous everywhere. Woot. All right, now sine of x is also an all real situation which means that's also continuous everywhere. I'm just gonna put the little two tick marks to indicate it's the same thing. Hopefully you guys know that, yeah. All right, now tangent. I'm gonna look at tangent a little bit differently. Tangent is sine over cosine. You guys remember talking about this when we, deal, when we dealt with domain pre-COVID-19. Cosine of x, if it's on the bottom of the fraction, cannot equal zero. which means the places that make cosine zero are domain issues. So where does cosine of x equals zero? Think about it. Double check with your uh, unit circle. It's all reals except x can't be pi over two plus pi n. All right, it's, it's pi over two and three pi over two and all the Basically, all the added pi n's to those, they're basically domain issues. And really, we didn't achieve this domain issue by canceling out factors from the fraction. They're asymptotes at that spot. Because remember, tangent, we graphed those for quite a lengthy period of time back in the first semester. Tangent has asymptotes. Asymptotes are non-removable discontinuities. So bottom line is, You've got a non-removable discontinuity, or a bunch of them, at x equals pi over 2 plus pi n. Which means everybody else follows suit. All right, so secant of x is 1 over cosine. Same deal. Which I don't know if you guys remember this, but secant and tangent had the exact same asymptotes. The, the, the asymptotes existed at the same spots because cosine was on the bottom of both of those. So uh, it's the same thing here and the same thing here for tangent and secant. Since this is 1 over sine and this is cosine over sine, They both have that, that property that, hey, sine can't be equal to zero for those two. So where does sine equal zero? Good, pi n. So it's all reals, except x can't be pi n, which means you have non-removable discontinuities at x equals pi n for cosecant and for cotangent. All right, that's actually just the basics of this stuff. What happens when we start implementing, let's say the angle is not just x, but it's like x squared or x plus 7. Ah, let's see what to do. All right, so we're keeping this all in mind. I think we can erase this. You can look at your notes. So we've got cosine of x minus 1. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Cosine with an angle that has a fraction inside of it. This is 
is a little tricky. So what we do is we say, okay, there's nothing inherently wrong with cosine. Cosine's good. It's not on the bottom of the fraction. It's x cubed minus one. <laughs> x cubed minus x that's on the bottom of the fraction. So the, the way you approach this is you say, you know, cosine is, we're, we're good there. We don't need to like do anything with where's cosine equals zero. That's not an issue. It's this. That's bad. Okay. So what we do is we say x minus 1 over x cubed minus x. Let's see how this shakes out. So the bottom you can factor an x out leaving you with x squared minus 1 inside. And then you can take the x squared minus 1 and create difference of squares factoring. Which cancels x minus 1 from the top and x minus 1 from the bottom. Now, there wasn't inherently anything wrong with cosine, but this is creating domain issues, which is going to create continuity issues. So here's what we do. We canceled out x minus 1 factors. That means we have removable discontinuities at x equals 1. These two did not cancel out. We have non-removable discontinuities at x equals 0 and negative 1. And then we make no fuss about the fraction because cosine is continuous everywhere. But the fraction, it messed up cosine. All right, let's move on to number 10. All right, uh, cotangent of x plus 3. First move, let's rewrite cotangent, or... <clears throat> Let's rewrite in terms of sine and cosine. That's one of the fundamental things we did when we were proving trig identities and whatnot. You guys love that stuff. Never mind. <laughs> I was going to say we should go over a bunch of trig, straight up pure trig, but uh, this whole remote learning thing is coming to a close in a few weeks, so I don't know. Maybe I'll keep making the videos over the summer. Hmm. All right, we've got a fraction. There is no inherent problem with cosine. There is no inherent problem with x plus 3. It's a polynomial nested inside of a trig. Cosine's okay. x plus 3 is okay. The top is all good. The fact that we have a fraction is an issue. Sine of x plus 3 cannot equal 0. You cannot divide by 0. And this is where we had to come up with a clever little trick that you guys have already done with the finding domain business. However, it's been, what, a month and a half? It's, it's been a while since we've talked face-to-face -face about this stuff. Sine of x equals 0 at pi n. So what you do is you say, set the thing that's inside the sine's angle. This is actually called the angle of sine. x plus 3, therefore, needs to be set equal to pi n. In this case, set not equal to pi n. See, if I did, if I did sine of pi, that would give me 0. If I did sine of 2 pi, that would give me 0. See? Right? But instead of pi and 2 pi, I'm talking about x plus 3. So I'm setting the x plus 3 equal to pi and 2 pi and 3 pi and 4 pi, the pi n. And that's it. We got it. x cannot equal pi n minus 3. Now, that would normally be the domain. The domain would be all reals, except when x equals pi n minus 3. What your job now is to say, it is continuous everywhere except 
non-removably discontinuous at that spot. And if you're wondering, like, how did he decide between non-removable dis non discontinuity and removable discontinuity, it's I did not cancel with some kind of computational factoring or conjugates or something like that, okay? It's non-removable. They're asymptotes. All right, we got some fun ones here to hopefully close out this video. <clears throat> over here we got 1 plus secant of x over secant squared of x minus 1 alright so hopefully you guys are thinking to yourself it is a difference of squares party on the bottom let's take it apart so you got 1 plus secant of x this will be secant of x plus 1 secant of x minus 1 which creates a cancellation. The question is, what did we cancel, though? We canceled secant of x minus 1 equals 0. That would be our removable discontinuity. So we need to know where the x's are removably discontinuous, not just where secant of x is removably discontinuous. So you'd add 1 to both sides. Secant of x equals 1 where on the unit circle? Uh, my best policy on this is to change it into sines and cosines. Remember, secant is 1 over cosine, which means you can just flip the right-hand side of the equation and rewrite it in terms of cosine. Now, you flip 1, you get 1. Ah, where does cosine equal 1? It equals 1 at x equals 0 plus 2 pi n. If you're struggling with this, look at the unit circle. Cosine of x equals 1, where the x value is 1, and that's, that's 0, 2 pi, 4 pi, 6 pi. Just at that spot does it equal 1. Now, what about this guy? You're non-removably discontinuous. Yeah. So, oh no. I'm sorry. This is over here. This should have been a plus. I'm sorry if I confused you. Oh, we don't have time for this. <laughs> I'm sorry. Well, what we did was we figured out what this one is. So secant of x equals 1 at 2 pi n. Okay, this, all it does is change it to negative 1, negative 1. That's over here. All right? So that will be pi, 3 pi, 5 pi, pi plus 2 pi n. And no, I can't just make it 0 pi. I can't just make it pi n. Because the non-removable needs to be separated from the removable. Okay, one thing that you guys would probably forget. There is something built into this problem that most people will neglect. It is the fact that there is a secant of x in there. And... We got distracted by all the factoring that could be done on the bottom and the fact that there was a fraction there. But what about the fraction for secant of x? What? Secant of x equals 1 over cosine. That means that wherever cosine equals 0, we have a non-removable discontinuity. Completely separate from these other two. So, because secant of x... Right? Because it just exists in this problem. We have to say 1 over cosine is lurking about, which means pi over 2 plus pi n is where cosine equals 0. You have a non-removable discontinuity also at x equals pi over 2 plus pi n. All right. 